The Foundation ordered a male D-Class personnel to torture D-3032 with a combat knife until she opened the door. After two hours of tormenting, D-3032 died from blood loss. She made no attempt to open the door in the entire process. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object, SCP-303. SCP-303, also known as the Doorman, is a nude, sexless, emaciated humanoid figure with reddish-brown skin. Instead of normal facial features, its head is dominated by an extremely large mouth, which bears a set of oversized human teeth. It continually vocalizes a wheezing noise loud enough to be heard from the other side of most solid doors. SCP-303 will periodically materialize behind any closed door, hatch, or other entryway barrier opposite an observer, chosen by unknown means. 303 will then remain behind the door for an indeterminate amount of time. Any individual attempting to open the door or barrier will experience intense, paralyzing fear that lasts until 303 dematerializes. However, analysis indicates that SCP-303 is not, in fact, purposefully inducing fear in the victims. SCP-303 does not allow itself to come into direct visual contact with any observer and has never allowed any individual to view more than 10% of its form. When the door or other entryway barrier is partially or completely transparent, 303 will materialize in an orientation that leaves only 10% or less of its body visible, or cause effects of fog or frost on the transparent surface to achieve the same effect. If SCP-303 is approached from a direction in which there is not a solid object or door breaking line of sight, it will dematerialize before direct visual contact is made. Any electronic or complex mechanical devices that 303 encounters will temporarily be disabled. 303 has made no recorded attempt to engage any observer physically or verbally. In an incident, a Foundation agent was showering in her private quarters bathroom when she became aware of the presence of 303 on the opposite side of the shower curtain. It was wheezing extremely loudly. Startled by the discovery, she accidentally struck the shower curtain causing it to sway outwards. The curtain partially wrapped around 303, revealing that it was less than 0.5 meters from the curtain, standing erect and facing the shower. The agent reports spending approximately the next three hours sobbing in the shower, quietly, as not to disturb 303. Luckily, the agent was able to exit the shower when 303's wheezing stopped. In another incident, an agent encountered 303 inside the Foundation's break room, he was attempting to obtain coffee creamer from the counter cabinet when he heard loud wheezing emanating from the cabinet and was overtaken by overwhelming fear. The agent later reported that 303 was huddled in the cabinet in a fetal position. The agent was too afraid to open the cabinet at that moment, but later, when the cabinet was examined, one container of powdered coffee creamer was missing. This is the first recorded instance of SCP-303 removing an object from a scene. After the object missing incident, a professor was discovered dead from dehydration in a second floor storage room. It was estimated that the professor spent up to five days in the storage room before being discovered. A small four meter by four meter decompression chamber separated the storage room from the adjoining hallway. 303 occupied the decompression chamber for the duration of the professor's isolation in the storage room, disallowing entry from either direction and making it impossible for him to leave. After all the above incidents, a team consisting of a researcher, a professor, four security personnel, and four D-Class personnel were assigned to immediately perform on-site testing. The following test took place at the door to a room from the first floor hallway, which SCP-303 was reported to be within the room. One male D-Class personnel, D-3031, was ordered to open the door and threatened that if he does not open the door, he would be transferred to another horrible SCP duty for non-compliance. He refused, citing extreme fear. Then, the Foundation threatened him again, saying that if he doesn't do it, he would be terminated on the spot for non-compliance. He refused, claiming that if he were to do so, that SCP-303 would hurt him. He was terminated on the spot. Shortly after, a female D-Class personnel, D-3032, that had witnessed the termination of D-3031 was ordered to open the door, 
and threatened that she would be terminated on the spot for non-compliance. She refused, claiming that if she opened the door, that SCP-303 would hurt her. And although D-3032 was not terminated, the Foundation ordered a male D-Class personnel, D-3033, to torture D-3032 with a combat knife until she opened the door. After two hours of tormenting, D-3032 died from blood loss. She made no attempt to open the door in the entire process. The Foundation once assigned Dr. Hessen to test on SCP-303, along with SCP-729-J. SCP-729-J is a soft toy that gives death stare and corrode anything or anyone who even catches a slight look at it. When Dr. Hessen was told to walk through the door with 303 on the other side while holding SCP-729-J, 303 promptly opened the door for Dr. Hessen and ushered her through before quickly exiting the room, with Dr. Hessen showing no sign of the usual fear response. 303 was found six hours later in an abandoned storage closet in a fetal position, sucking its thumb. SCP-303 appears to have claimed the second floor storage room as its own. It has so far disallowed any personnel entry to the room since May 4th of 2010. It leaves periodically to acquire Foundation property, which is then moved into the second floor storage room. To date, 303 has acquired one cryotube, three sets of standard Foundation surgical equipment, two D-Class research cadavers, one gasoline-powered generator, a variety large quantities of chemicals, and also a container of powdered coffee creamer. In addition to this, a number of classified materials have been obtained by SCP-303. Staff are still attempting to determine what specific purposes SCP-303 may have for these materials. 303 was also suspected of stealing SCP-573 and SCP-899. This incident was recorded in Site-62's containment breach record. It was about 1.34 a.m. that day, and 303 manifests outside Site-62's main entrance. Security personnel were panicking and fleeing. Ten minutes later, 303 opened Site-62's main entrance doors. Video feeds overcome with static for a period of 36 seconds. Video blackout follows possible route of entity through site. Then, a SCP personnel reported seeing 303. It headed towards inanimate SCP storage vaults. Security team was tasked to contain 303 immediately. After about 20 minutes, the entire security team was incapacitated by SCP-303. 303 exits Site-62 unopposed, and video interference finally ceases. Security later reports an overwhelming feeling of terror, preventing them from acting against 303. Upon inspection of Site-62 after the incident, SCP-573 was found missing. Warning sent out to all sites to be on guard for the entity. However, things didn't just end there. Around 6.17 in the evening the next day, personnel at an unknown site report feeling of unease and panic. As the site is situated in the Rocky Mountains, it was put on lockdown while nearby sites were contacted. All the video feeds of the site were disrupted. Power fails, distress signal deactivates automatically. The site was unresponsive to outside contact. After an hour, MTF Alpha 16 finally arrived at the site, but all personnel found dead of evisceration or remain missing. MTF fails to verify location of anomaly housed at the site. SCP-899 declared missing. As SCP-303 has not yet been known to travel beyond the boundaries of an unknown site of the SCP Foundation, the entire area of the site is currently considered as SCP-303's containment area. All rooms in the site are to be altered, as to have two entrances separated by a distance of 10 meters or line of sight. Personnel are to be distributed evenly throughout the facility, with available radio or intercom contact so that encounters may be resolved quickly. Personnel who witness SCP-303 are to be submitted for immediate psychiatric evaluation. All SCP objects housed at the same site since before April 6, 2010 are to be transferred to another site one at a time. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. 
check out our description below on how to submit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye!